Hey what's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Hey Ocarina. This is going to be a pickups video for the month of October and November 2017. Uh, so basically I decided that since I didn't get too much in October that I would just combine these videos. That way it's not really, you know, a waste of space whereas I got, you know, four things in the month of October. So compared to November here, that's not very much. So uh, let's just get started. So first of all, I got Quantum Break here for the Xbox One. Now there are a lot of people who say that this game is really bad, but I honestly think that they kind of are blowing things a little bit out of proportion. I only paid about $15 for this, so maybe I just didn't get burned as much as other people, but as far as uh, you know, third person shooters go, it's pretty fun so far. And I actually do like the TV show elements to this. They're pretty interesting, you know. So yeah, overall, Quantum Break, it's a pretty cool game. Got that. I also got Assassin's Creed Origins. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge Assassin's Creed fan. I've been playing, you know, ever since um, I played all of the games before 3. Uh, because that was the first one that I was like, oh, this is a pretty cool franchise, you know, I should play these. So, um, you know, I played uh, 1 through Revelations in preparation for 3, and ever since then I've stayed up to date on all of the Assassin's Creed games, whereas a lot of my friends have kind of fallen off of those and just stopped playing them for one reason or the other. I've actually beaten this game already. Uh, <laughs> not too crazy about the ending, but, you know, overall it's definitely one of my top games for the year, so definitely pick up Assassin's Creed Origins if you haven't gotten a chance yet. Now after that, the only other two things I got were accessories for the Xbox One in the month of October. This is the uh, Xbox One official media remote. Uh, I mean, I just kind of wanted this because I was tired of having to power on, you know, the actual controller if I wanted to just, you know, watch YouTube or something like that. It's a waste of batteries to have to plug in the controller or, you know, replace the batteries or something like that. And then the other accessory I got, I can't really show you because it's behind the TV right now, but it's the um, Xbox One Connect adapter. Believe it or not, I actually like the voice commands for Connect, so I wanted to keep it plugged in when I got one of the things uh, that I got in November that I'll tell you all about. Okay, so that's it for October, so next up we're going to go to November. First of all, I got the Xbox One X. As you all know, I had pre-ordered one when they announced it, so... Uh, I can't show you the console because it's behind the TV. This is the box here. It's upside down, but there you go. I got the Project Scorpio edition. I was pretty lucky to get that. And so far, I've really had a lot of fun with the console. You know, it's nice having a um, kind of a mid-cycle upgrade, you know, because before it had always been like, oh, you know, the Xbox is underpowered compared to the PS4, and that was always something that kind of irritated me a bit, especially since I prefer playing my multiplats on Xbox generally. Um, I just like the, uh, you know, the stick layout and stuff like that, and the ecosystem overall, but uh, yeah, so I got the Xbox One X, and then the same day I got that, I also was able to get, I'll show you all this, an Xbox One Elite controller. Now they had a pretty cool deal going on with these where uh, basically if you bought an Xbox One X you would get $50 off of the controller. So that already took the price down from $150 to $100. But then on top of that if you traded in an Xbox One controller it would be another $50 off. So I ended up paying $50 for this which is a pretty good deal. Alright so next up we're going to get on to some uh, Black Friday deals here. I got. This is Assassin's Creed, the Ezio Collection. This had been something I'd kind of been waiting for the price to drop, and it finally did to a point where I was actually willing to get it over Black Friday. So it's pretty cool. I'm going to be honest here. Um, even though these games have visual upgrades, I'm not really impressed with how they've aged, especially 2, which I was surprised about because everyone, you know, me included, thinks 2 is one of the better games in the franchise, but as far as visuals go, it <laughs> it's really rough. Whereas, um, you know, Brotherhood and Revelations especially still look pretty good. Like, they, they hold up decently well. Alright, so then next up, I also got Halo Wars 2 here. Now, I played a lot of Halo Wars 1. Uh, there were a couple missions in that game that I kind of just, you know, turned me off from actually finishing the game, but... 
as far as what I've seen from this game, um, it looks pretty cool. I just have too much that I'm playing right now. And one of the games in particular I'm currently playing, so that is taking up quite a bit of my time. And that game is Horizon Zero Dawn. This is another game where I was just waiting for the right price at the right time. And I finished Assassin's Creed Origins and I just kind of had this hole in me <laughs> for like an open world game that I can just pour myself into. And so I figured, you know, they had just recently had the uh, Frozen Wilds DLC for this game. So I figured I'd pick it up. And so far, I absolutely love it. And I definitely see why this is a lot of people's game of the year. All right, next up, I got Mist 3 here for the original Xbox. Now, um, this is a definitely an odd game. Uh, it's not something that really works on the... Uh, original Xbox if you catch my meaning um, if it had a mouse it would probably work a lot better but as far as the controls go they didn't really have it down in this one and like the the visuals are just so odd I can't even describe it really it's like there's like full motion video and you kind of like move the camera and stuff and it's like this really odd lens it's definitely a unique game I can give it that much but Maybe I would need to play, um, you know, Miss 1 and 2 to really get an appreciation for Miss 3 here. Then I also got, this is Mist 4 Revelation for the original Xbox as well. This game holds up a lot better. They, um, tweaked a lot of the, um, you know, gameplay elements. And the, uh, full motion video is a lot crisper. It looks a lot nicer. So overall, I think if you were going to choose between these two, I would probably get Mist 4. Although, in all honesty... I feel like this is probably a franchise that you would want to start with from the beginning. Because I went into Mist 3 and I had absolutely no idea what was happening. Alright, so then next up, I got a Sega Saturn game. Well, actually, it's three Sega Saturn games. This came with uh, Virtual Fighter 2, which, believe it or not, in spite of being one of the most common games on the system, I've just never been able to find a copy that like actually had everything that I wanted. I wanted to get the long box version, you know, with the um, holographic manual, or the cover, but uh, I just, I've never been able to find a copy of it myself. It also comes with Virtual Cop, or Virtua Cop, which unfortunately I can't play because I use a um, SCART adapter for my TV, it's an HD TV, so I can't use a light gun for that. And then unfortunately this came with Daytona USA, which is a game that I already had, so, you know. But the combined price for uh, the other two made it a good enough deal that I just figured, you know, I would jump on that. After that, I also got a Sega CD game. This is Soul Feast for the Sega CD. It's a really cool shmup. Um, I'm not really good at shmups, but, uh, you know, it's an interesting and actually pretty good title for the Sega CD. So I saw it and I figured, you know, I would pick that up. Then after that, got Call of Duty World War II. I haven't put as much time into this as I would have liked to, but uh, eventually I'll get around to it. I was kind of hoping that this would have a split screen multi or split screen co-op specifically for the campaign, but unfortunately it doesn't. So you know that's just something that I got to deal with now. Then after that, something kind of interesting happened. I went to a um, Half Price Books, which is a local used bookstore, obviously, but they also sell a lot of video games, and I was sifting through the piles and. Um, something caught my eye and it was this stack of games here for the Intellivision but what also caught my eye and made me really jump on these was that they had this is the Intellivoice voice synthesis adapter this was 10 bucks in the box and I just figured you know it's such an odd thing and I remember seeing it on the uh, angry video game nerds channel and it just sounds so ridiculous now, I haven't gotten to try it out yet because unfortunately I don't have any of the Intellivoice games yet, but I'm definitely going to look forward to playing these and, you know, showing these to my friends and stuff like that. Then after that, the Intellivision games that I was able to get were Sea Battle, Star Strike, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, and Atlantis. Now, unfortunately, with all those games, I am waiting on uh, two things, technically. For the Intellivoice, i got to get, you know, some games so I can test that out. But I also want to mod my Intellivision so that it has composite video. 
Because frankly speaking, whenever I play um, the Intellivision, the Magnavox Odyssey 2, and the Atari 2600, I am constantly <laughs> nitpicking about how terrible the image quality is. And I mean, that's just a consequence of when they came out, you know, and composite video wasn't really widespread yet. But at the same time, I really wish that they had at least done like a revision or something for those consoles, especially the Atari 2600. Um, where they could have had composite video. I don't know. That's just my opinion, though. And then finally, to end it all, I got... This is a Serious Sam 1 for the original Xbox. Kingdom Hearts 2 for the PlayStation 2. Believe it or not, I've never actually played a Kingdom Hearts game, and I plan on playing the first one. I need to buy it. There's another copy of it at um, Half Price Books where I got this as well. But for whatever reason, I just decided to get this one. I think it was because um, it was the greatest hits copy of uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, and I usually prefer to get, you know, the black label ones. And then finally, this is Xeno Saga. As far as I can tell, it's a JRPG. Um, it's not a franchise I'm really familiar with, but it was cheap, and I figured I would pick it up. So anyways, uh, as always, this was inspired by Adam Korolik and his uh, Playload uh, um, series on his channel. Definitely check that out if you haven't before. His channel is really good. He does a lot of Shenmue content, which is awesome because I friggin' love that game. So anyways, guys, thank you for watching. See you next time.